Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministry. I'm your host, Brother Jack, as we're taking the Gospels back to the street. Today's drive through message is King Solomon, Bad Slave. Love not the word. Adam told King Solomon two or three times. Each one of these characters, like a dying, have different facets to teach on. We're going to do the same thing. We're talking about King Solomon, Bad Slave. And we got him away from God. So we'll learn from these people's mistakes in the Bible. That's why we go over this character. It was written for an example. Now, in terms of having it all, King Solomon had it all. Because that most men would put their right arm on. That you know, he was the richest man that ever lived. If King Solomon would be considered a tree in, in today's uh, become. He had all, all the women. You could ever have the biggest plane for you. A thousand women, 700 wives, and only 300 concubines, the big women. So King Solomon had it all. Of course, what the world deems as being successful is the world's wisest, wisest man. And God made him this way, God gave him all this. But it's written for our example. With all of this, King Solomon lost the Lord, which is worth more than all the riches and the wealth that he uh, got that God had given in the attempt. So we're going to study his humble beginnings and his downfall. And this is all written for our example. Now, King Solomon started out a boy king. I believe he was approximately eight years old, like King Tut. King Tut was eight when he began to reign. He reigned from 10 years to 18. And I believe the same was Solomon when he started out as a child. And we're going to go here. We're going to get into this right away. And I just, this just came off, by the way, the three rich fools talking about God giving wealth and the wealth. Corrupted. And that's why we got this title, Love Not the Lord, but I've seen riches and peace. I believe it's Psalms 62, I believe. When riches and peace, it says about your heart. Stay low with wealth, as God gives it to you. And he gave it to some. But we're going to see how all that wealth, and which wealth, come with. As a man, trying to figure from a man. So you got, you gonna have a lot of more temptation because I'm like, bro. Think <laughs> Solomon had the most beautiful women you can imagine. As I am, so he had a lot of temptation, and that was his downfall. Now, First Kings, let's go to First Kings three three, and look at Solomon's humble beginnings. Now, this is going to be like a maybe three or four part video. So hang in there. We're going to do some skip tracing. I always like to brace you every time. We're going to your house. It's going to be like a roller coaster ride through this brace today. So I want to cover a lot of things. So uh, we get into it right away. The first three is three. three. And Solomon loved the Lord. See, you started out right. First Kings 3 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statutes of David with his father. Now pay close attention to this. Only. Always underlining the Bible says then, there, but, always, in the prepositional phrases, conjunctions. Make sure you underline. I said, need to go be a change. Only be sacrificed and burnt incense in our hands. So he started out a little contaminated. Now, to give you a little backdrop on his mom, his mom was a Hittite, Bathsheba. She was black, of Ham's descendants. 
And God told his people not to even leave. Not to even leave or hang them here. Because they would lead them astray to strange gods and and pagans. And also they had giants running through their bloodstream. So God didn't want them to get married for that reason. And then to do with anybody right now. Was, was uh, David, he stole Bathsheba from Uriah, the Hittite, one of his faithful servants. So the relationship started out on perversity. You know, lusting after Bathsheba. You know, the relationship started out with lust. Her son David on the roof. I'll give her teaching. I got David and Bathsheba David in the family. But that's the backdrop. And he they murdered Uriah the Hittite and stole his wife, Bathsheba. So this relationship, this son, came out of adultery. Now God killed the firstborn son that they had. They had one of the crimes, and Saul was brother. But he let Saul live and he honored David's wishes that he was really in love with this woman. And, uh, he honored it. So that's the backdrop of Solomon starting out. He was a child of an adulterous affair from another man's, from his dad's to another man's wife or mother. So I'm just giving you a little backdrop. So it didn't start out too well, but like I said, God started over and on him and led him to king. And Solomon loved the Lord and walked in his statutes. David his father, and only he sacrificed the burden of sets and high places. And the king went to Gideon to sacrifice to him. For there was a great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer up on the altar. Kind of mixing paganism with God even in the beginning. But God's too honored to sacrifice. And that's the key word. Study how many times after a sacrifice, the word of the Lord came. So get in for free. God is sacrificed for him and him with his word. In giving, and the Lord appeared on the song, and it wounded by night after the sacrifice. And God said, Ask what shall I do? What do you want? And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant, my father, great mercy, accordingness. He walked before thee in truth and righteousness, and in thy heart is the heart with thee. And thou hast kept from him his great kindness. Thou hast given him a son to sit on a throne as it was this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. You see, I told you about eight years ago. The prophet. And I know not how to go with me out. I don't know how to, to go out and come in. He said, I don't know how to conduct myself in the kingly manner and then go to war and all that stuff. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge the people that I may discern between good and bad. For thou was able to judge this, thou so great a people. And the speech pleased the Lord. And Solomon asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life. Say, you weren't selfish, you weren't focused on you. You asked for wisdom and discernment. How the righteous be judged among you. And because thou hast not asked this thou hast not asked for thyself long one. Even as thou hast riches for thyself, and hast asked the life of, of thine enemy, but hast asked for thyself understanding to his own judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. Though I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. So God gave him a wise heart. An understanding heart. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee. Any a wise like unto thee. 
So God made me the wisest king in heaven. And a lot of Proverbs and stuff that you, you hear about from other countries and around the world, they came to see Solomon and took him back to their land. A lot of them didn't acknowledge Solomon and claimed it as their own. And they was actually quoting Solomon. Two, two of the wisest people in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that is, that are quoted worldwide. First was Joseph. He was the wisest of the East. And those kings and wise men came after him stubborn, studied his right, his quote, that was Joseph. Joseph was a Solomon, he told Solomon. And second was Solomon. But you know, he, he's descended from Joseph then. His name. Oh, it's worse than his son. And then you get into Daniel, another. That's down the road. Another one of the wisest of that lineage of uh, Israel. So God said, because you can ask for any life in the enemies, you need to ask for a long life and then ask for riches. I'm going to give you all that plus the understanding of it. And the old I have done according to thy word, and no I do be a wise and understanding heart, but that there is no like thee before thee, neither after thee shall live in the wise, like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall be any among the kings like unto thee in all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways and keep my statutes, God always has condition. And if thou wilt Walk in my ways and keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did for Then I will lift it thy days. And Solomon awoke. Then behold, it was a dream. So God came to him in a dream and granted him that. So we see he had a humble beginning. <clears throat> he asked for the right thing he wanted. A heart of God, a heart of wisdom, and understanding from that. Now, let's move on. Let's go, go down to, let's go to uh, 429. It's still in 1 Kings. 1 Kings 429. And God gave Solomon. Wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and the largeness of heart, even as the same that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom, and Solomon's wisdom, excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country, and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wise, and all the men that Ethan, and the Ezraite, the Ezraite, the Ezraite, and Edom, and Chalcol, and Dara, the sons of Naho, and the fame, and his fame was in all the nations round about. Everybody came to see Solomon from around the end of the years was. And he, and he spake 3,000 proverbs. And his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the high side that springeth up out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, he had understanding of body, he had understanding of zoology. I mean, he was a biochemist. He <laughs> saw that there was nothing he didn't understand. Or as we get into science, he was a scientist. See, when God gives you wisdom, it spills over to other things. You can comprehend medical issues under anything. When God gives you wisdom. He, he was a, he do, he was a, 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 a holistic uh, medicine man. He knew botany, he knew plants, what can heal you, herbs. So I'm just gifted in all of it. Spring of the wall. He also 
state of the beast, then of the fowl, and the creeping things, and fishes. And there came all the people to hear the wisdom of Saul, and all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. God made him the wisest king ever, and the richest king ever. All right, so now we're going to move on, so I want you to understand that I told you. Bring on to the next and keep it moving. Now let's slide on down. You are still in the first kings, okay? And we're about to get out of kings. The first kings are left. And see the downfall of the song. This is all written for right now. The King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, created of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites. So I don't, so I And the guy told these people, in the book, in the Torah, the book of the law, not the enemy, but not the house, in the corner, sexual intercourse with these women, not the enemy. And that's the reason why he said they were luring you away from me, and you'll be serving their God. And also they had the giants in their own street. The woman of the Moabite, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zagonians and Hittites, of the nations, and his mom was Hittite, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto Solomon and the children of Israel, You should not go into them, neither shall they come to you, and not to have sex with them, and not to have children. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. God warned. Solomon clave unto these in love. He disobeyed God. And he loved these strange women. Now, I'm not being too harsh on Solomon. I'm just reading for an example. You know, I know that we're going to get to the New Testament because while we speak, we're speaking through Solomon using him as a kaleidoscope. But I understand. I, you know, as a man, <laughs> I get it. I've had some uh, some beautiful, strange wives, some strange women try to lead me away from the Lord. You know, but I see here single and still with the Lord. In fact, I said this is really going on like that. And I don't stand the power of you know, women to lure me away from them. I didn't been there and done it. And I had to make a decision. And you have to too. You're a little man on it. And we're going to get to the New Testament and you see why. And away from the heart and their God, Solomon paid unto these in love. This is uh, 1 Kings 11, chapter 11, 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Now imagine so. I mean, I once, I once did a uh, calculation of uh, if he slept with one wife every night, it came out for like three and a half years in, in rotation before he started over. That's every night. <laughs> Poor Solomon, I guess he didn't have much time to even run the kingdom with all these wires going on. Before it came to pass, when Solomon was old, I think they wore him out. He aged quickly. That his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And he was not perfect with the Lord his God. And his heart. Now he departed. Remember how he started out? He probably started out with a chink in his arm anywhere. He was worshiping the Lord on, on, uh, on the pagan side. with the uh, ziggurats and everything. You can start out perfect anyway. So look how you ended up. You went down here fast. As David his father, for Solomon went after Ashton and Samar, goddess of his Idolians, from Babylon, Nimrod's wife. 
and after Milgram. Now Milgram is very famous in your life. Anytime you hear Milgram, you associate this with Ball and uh, Mola. And Milgram is Mola. Two of Satan's generals, Ball and Mola. They always, always represent child sacrifice. You can't even mention them two without child sacrifice. And they dominated the then Canaanite world. They might have a very, like Milton's variation of the name, but that's more. How uh, God abhorred and hated more. God hated child sacrifice. I mean, we deal with the same situation today. If anything, it looks like it came back just as strong as it was back in these pagan days. He has been abducted and sacrificed to Mola to the end of day by the Satan. No cult. The Moonlight Base and Oak. Jim. That is shame. And they sacrifice for power, riches and wealth. Blah, blah, blah. But here's some <coughs> who knows the Lord, who God is blessed. <coughs> Greater than any man that ever lived. <clears throat> like I said, he'd be a multi trillion <clears throat> in the days of come. And look what happened to him. He went a horn after strange gods with these strange wives. The Solomon went after Asher, the goddess of the Zygon, and after Mel, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. And went not fully after the Lord as David his father. Then Solomon built a high place, the chiefs, the ziggurats, and the abomination of Moab. That's, that's, uh, that's the same guy, Moab. In the hill that is before Jerusalem. He set it up right in front of the city of Jerusalem. Oh, he goes on with his work. And, and from Moab, you see? The abomination. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Uh, Chemish. I'm, I apologize. Chemish is destroyed Apollo. It's mentioned in the Bible. That's the demon. He's all demons. He's that like, Satan's general. I mean, his top. He's his top general. And these, these are all the, are, got their kingdom saved. For following Satan and rebelling against God and promised them. They'll be worshipped. So that's what we do worship and demons. But the fallen angels, let me rephrase that. They worship the fallen angels. You've got demons too good, disembodied spirits from the flood and death. Those are the demons. Just to make that clear. But these are fallen angels. They follow Satan. You've got your boot on the head. Let's read this again. Verse 6. I saw the evil evil the sight of the Lord. And went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then Solomon built a high place of Chemish, the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem. Right in front of God said and said, Man, Jerusalem is, is a holy land. That's God's holy territory. Hands off of Jerusalem. He is a bone of peace. That's God's turn. So he puts his pagan. I am right in front. <laughs> As you walk to go into the city, you're looking at this abomination of Mora. The pedal pulled by the way in Rome. Set the uh, Moloch in front of the Colosseum. The big statue of Rome. I thought I'd throw that in before. In the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Moloch, and for the abomination of the children of Israel. So Solomon introduced child sacrifice. And they sacrificed thousands of people. Here, thousands. This is like an ongoing machine thing. Here. And he said it up in the valley of him, when you get Gehenna, hell. That's translated in the Bible. Where the fire is burning to Mola, child sacrifice. Where the top is drawn clay to drown out the kids screaming. 
It's a sacred fruit. And also cannibal when you deal with more. And, and drinking blood, vampire. Get high on the blood, drink it, and made that new. Been around for thousands of years. I'm still around today. They call it drink of cold paint. It's a major drug that's being pushed in hand. And I know you circle nine pillow in your week. The blood of chill. The most expensive drug in the world. And the most the greatest high that everybody said that they take their hand. Scaring children. And to get this a dream from my child sacrifice. This is what Solomon did. And likewise, did he for all his strange wives, which burned incense and sacrifices unto their gods. He didn't bring them over to his God. He went out horned after their God. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God to Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But keep not that, but, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as thou hast done for thee, thou hast not kept any of my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely let the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. For God's going to strip him of the kingdom. Now, Let's move on. Which God did. He split the kingdom. You had Israel, the ten tribes to the north, and Judah, and Benjamin and Levi to the uh, south. God rent the kingdom from it. So now, when you read the scripture from then on, after Solomon died, it's two different kings, two different kings. And that's where a lot of people got confused. You had the Sumerian kingdom to the north, and you had the Ju Judea kingdom of Judah to the south. And the kingdom that was of the north that was ruled was from uh, Ephraim and the nest. All right, that's his neighbor we talked about it. He's been given. Now let's move on. Told you hang on to your hands to see Solomon. His death is down for a while. But his wives. Now we're going to move on. Now, like I said, Solomon was the richest man in the world. Solomon was so rich that he had a city built, a fortified city. The house is rich, as I thought I'd throw that in too. Imagine a, a downtown, a major downtown, fortified city. With, that's your bank, the whole the house, your treasure. I mean, he had art and treasure, and I just want to emphasize this, jewels, rare jewels, uh, over 40,000, I believe, rare horses and stables. We're talking of, you, you guys cannot imagine. <laughs> the, the, well, he was the richest man ever, richest playboy ever, called him the playboy. We saw him, God, <laughs> he's in the bottom. God made that. God made it though. But it, it corrupted the point of another thing. Now let's move on and read a little bit about Solomon from the modern of Solomon. We'll go to Ecclesiastes. Find the book of Ecclesiastes. 
you'll come upon Job, Psalms, and through Psalms, and your Proverbs, and then you'll come into Ecclesiastes. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes. So let's read from the mind of Solomon here. The words of the preacher, son of David, king of Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh unto the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation come, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also arises, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth not his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth the bow into the moon. It worth, it worth, and thou continue, and the wind returneth again according to its circuits. Only one other person came to understand all of God's creation. That was before Solomon, and that's the Enoch. So read the book of Enoch. I read it, y'all did my teaching. Brother Jay, the book of Enoch, Brother Jay reads, the book of Enoch, Brother Jay reads. And Enoch was shown in all the courses of the winds, the celestial stations of the suns of the circuit that I've ever seen. How he had everything set up in a, a rhythmic pattern. And he set the courses for everything, the procession of the equinoxes. You know, that's when you get into the heavenly bodies. God said, I named all the stars. You look up three stars and say, He said, I got a name for each one. You read that in Job. It's an order to this creation. I mean, God ordered <clears throat> this, this creation is founded on His law. The land, the, the sea, the God talked about, I set a band around the sea where you won't overflow the bank. Yeah, I said, well, sandbar we call God's law.